At Summit Ministries, we help students understand there is such a thing as a Christian worldview. But we also want them to know there are counterfeit worldviews that are trying to overturn a Christian worldview. These counterfeit worldviews include Islam, secularism, Marxism, new spirituality, and postmodernism. Are these all of the worldviews out there? No, no, they're, they're probably hundreds, thousands of worldviews. So why do we focus on these five counterfeits? Well, we focus on them because if you take Islam, secularism, Marxism, new spirituality, postmodernism together, you account for probably 90 to 95 percent of the non-Christian ideas that are floating around in the Western world. So you don't have to understand everything, you're just trying to get a sense of the patterns that flow. One more aspect of this chart. At Summit Ministries, we don't look at every single area of life, we look at the patterns in 10 areas, in 10 academic areas, theology, philosophy, ethics, biology, psychology, sociology, law, politics, economics, and history. Why those 10 and not others? Why isn't engineering on there? Because the battle of ideas is not raging in engineering these days. You could go to a sociology class and have the professor say, well, students in our world and everything is socially constructed, so two plus two might not equal four. If you go to an engineering class and the professor says two plus two doesn't equal four, <laughs> drop the class. Don't ever go in a building that's built by anyone who stays in the class. There's a reality out there that sometimes professors completely ignore in their desire just to appear thoughtful to their students. So, art. A student asked me, why isn't art on your list? And I said, well, if you think about it, art is about everything, isn't it? Art is about theology, philosophy, ethics, life. It's about all of these things. So is education. So we think these 10 areas are properly basic. Let me give you a quick illustration of how this would work. When I went to graduate school at the University of Denver, there were 25 students admitted into our program and the professor said, over time of the 25 who are admitted, only seven make it through. The rest of them drop out. They can't handle it. Well, I don't know about you, but if somebody says to me, you can't handle it, it makes me want to handle it. So I determine I will be one of the seven. I will do everything in my power to make sure that I stick to it and finish this program with my doctoral degree in hand. And I was able to do that. But as we went through the course, I realized I was putting effort into understanding the patterns of ideas that were at play. For instance, one of the first classes I took was called Psychology of the Spoken Language. Psychology of the Spoken Language. All right? So how am I going to understand the pattern of the, that idea? Well, I can go down the left-hand side of my chart, theology, philosophy, ethics, biology, psychology. I could go over from there. So what is what does Christianity say about psychology? What does secularism say about psychology? What does Marxism say about psychology? And by understanding that, I can realize, first of all, that there are really smart Christians who've thought these things through and I can learn from them and be confident in my faith. The second thing is that I don't have to understand every single thing that's ever been thought about secular psychology. If I just understand a couple of basic points, I can understand the times. So, so I'm down here in psychology. Then I went to the bookstore to pick up my textbook for this class, Psychology of the Spoken Language. The textbook was written by an author named L.S. Vygotsky. Just pause for a minute. Which worldview, if you just had to take a wild guess, would you say is the worldview of L.S. Vygotsky, knowing nothing other than his name? Just go across the top. Christianity, Islam, secularism, Marxism, New Spirituality, Postmodernism. Most people guess Marxism. And I ask why? They say because Vygotsky is a Russian name and Russia was Marxist from 1917 to 19, was it 1991? So 
they guess that. And again, when you're trying to understand patterns of ideas, you don't have to understand something 100%. You can develop convictions if you understand just a little bit more than average. So I went back to my class knowing that I was in a Marxist psychology class. When the professor introduced the class, oh, I forgot to tell you this. This is kind of a key part of the story. Ellis Vygotsky was a student of Ivan Pavlov. I found that out right away just by reading the preface to the textbook. Now, you know Ivan Pavlov, the famous Marxist psychologist who worked with dogs. So I went to class. I raised my hand. Professor, can you tell us a little more about the author of our textbook, Ellis Vygotsky? He said, sure, what would you... What would you like to know? I said, well, just tell us a little about his work and his life and what he, where he was from and all of that. The professor talked for a few minutes, but he never mentioned Ivan Pavlov as having been Vygotsky's teacher. So I, I raised my hand again. I said, I understand that Ellis Vygotsky was a student of Ivan Pavlov. The professor said, good point. Why do you bring that up? And I said, well, because Historians now regard Ivan Pavlov as having been a hack who used his psychological research to help Marxists figure out how they could control people so they could take over the world. And I'm just wondering what parts of Pavlov's ideology you think Vygotsky embraced and what parts you think he rejected. The professor looked at me and said, that is an excellent question. I looked around the room and realized all my classmates were staring at me as if to say, are we supposed to know this? But they felt behind and we'd only been in class for a few minutes in our doctoral program. It wasn't because I was all that smart, it's because I had a way of understanding the times. My classmates didn't have that. By the way, seven of the 25 turned out to be believing Christians. I found this out because they came to talk to me in the dark of night. Are you a Christian? Yeah, are you? I said, don't worry, I won't tell anybody. You know how sad that is? To have strong convictions that you aren't even willing to talk about publicly because you aren't sure they're true? What kind of life is that? Not to mention, what kind of faith is that? It's really significant then at Summit Ministries that we help students understand the pattern of ideas.